This is on YouTube for sure, right? Yep. Uh, look, I'm in the back getting blunted. America's most wanted. The plug is never fronted. You bitch niggas, I'm on it. It's fourth down. You clowns is fucking punny. This four pound running through niggas like Jim Brown. We been down. Ain't no stitching niggas got heart. Cause all we do is turn Helen Keller if we get caught. I got two guns, plural, nigga. Bury his body in somewhere rural, nigga. Now I'm fucking hood, got a mural, nigga. We run around like we own the world. I got a wife, I'm just putting dick in your fucking girl. I've been a rolling stone. Wherever I lay my hat, I just robbed the home. You niggas just bitch and moan. I've been fucking gone. I'm a space, nigga. No internet. My era is face to face, nigga. No hate. We up winning the race. I'm the wire. You willing grace. So get the fuck out my face, bitch, nigga. <laughs> Nigga, I'll bury that motherfucker, fucking bitch. You don't want no drama with me, nigga. Cause I make sure your mother's gonna stop. Fuck her. You just mash and dick sucking, clip busting. I'm on the block still hustling. OG taught me the game, he's still drunk. Yeah, he's the one that sold the crack and killed Ruffin. I feel nothing like I feel for nothing. Murder for fun. Why you bitch niggas running, motherfucker? Yeah. So, yo, this is uh, another episode of B-Boy Tech Artist Interview Series, and I got my man DJ Bless, set of Kane in the place. What's happening, bro? What's good, yo? What's popping? What's popping? Up in the place to be, man. Just yeah, good to have you, man. Good to have uh, you. No doubt, man. Same here, yo. I got a long story of uh, about you. I'll tell in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, for real. <laughs> no uh, doubt. Yeah. I heard about you years ago. And Word. I, you know, for hell yeah, I heard about you years ago and shit, man. I was looking for a uh, NPC 60. Okay. I you, yeah, I think you, I think I'm almost positive it was you. Did you get an NPC 60 about like six or seven years ago? Yep, got you, it right there. Yeah, you popped, you popped <laughs> it from some random dude and you said you drove like two hours to go get it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I, I saw it in a forum years ago because yep. I was looking for an NPC 60 and I had went to your site when I got mine and had to look to how to restore it. And yeah, you know, like, for real, it was a month too, and yep. you, know, you, you put the whole you put the whole thing on your. This is how you restore it. This is what you do. You know what I'm saying? I did, and, and I had a I had a part three, I think, that I was supposed to do, but I never did, never it. did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never did it. No, yeah, you kept me um, you kept me waiting, man, because I was like, man, yo, I had gotten all mine together, but that was like my first sixty. I had a couple okay. of them since then, but yeah, man, I kind of a lot of people don't be realizing with them old drum machines, man. You become your own tech. You do. You you almost have to be because there ain't nobody else. I mean, or there are people, but you end up paying a lot of money. You could do it yourself. Basically, yeah, you could do it yourself, man. Like for real, yeah. you had to learn how to open that thing up, how to all that, man. You, you kind of be like, man, I wish I went to uh, electrician school or something. Yeah, you know? <laughs> no doubt, no yeah, doubt. De dealing with those old machines, man, you definitely figure it out, man. How to solder, how to damn clean that shit everything man to put that thing back together oh my gosh you do you have to man i came up one time on a um a asr 10 and uh the asr 10 and yo this was a stoner in like the hollywood hills or something and um oh, let me turn that off yeah no, he, good, i turned my phone off <laughs> you good <laughs> and uh so he, he was a stoner in the hollywood hills and it was crazy he was like yo somebody gave me this and it got all this static and when i mess with the knobs is all this static and crazy stuff anyway i end up going over there and he was just in the in the garage just uh 
out of his mind. He was blown. Yeah. <laughs> he was That's like, there crazy. it is. And he said, let me turn it on and let you check it out so you can see what's wrong with it. I'm like, nah, it's good. You ain't got to turn it on. I already did the research on what parts I needed and everything. Yeah. He turned it on and started working fine. He was like, sorry, bro, I can't sell it to you. I get in the Holy car. Shit, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not working fine. I was. I was like, damn. All right. So I get in the car and I'm driving out of his driveway. Uh uh. And then I he came up, bro, bro. He comes running out the door and uh I turn around and get out. And he's like, it, it started doing it again, bro. Just take it. So I gave the dude $150. I took the ASR 10. I had the part already waiting at the crib because it was like a $20 part. And yeah. I went on ahead and fixed it up. I used it for about a year. Then I flipped it for like, I, don't, I can't remember. It was about $1,000, maybe 1100 Yeah, I just got rid of mine. I sold mine. I had mine since the 90s. I actually sold Word. mine. Yeah, I had That's dope. mine. It's a long story how I got mine. I had gotten one in the 90s. Um, then I had it forever. I gave it to my homeboy because I wasn't using it. Then he gave it back to me. Then mm -hmm. I started using it. And then my other homeboy wanted one. And I was like, man. He was like a brother, so I'm like, yo, here, I sell it to you and stuff, man. But I just sold my three thousand. I just sold. That. Yeah, I just sold that. Man, I'm not a fan of the three thousand, man. I think the NPC three thousand is like, um, I call it the Puff Daddy machine. To me, it sounds like the Jiggy era. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Like, you know, it's not grimy at all, man. And people mm -hmm. fail to realize a lot of people be like, oh, Jay Dilla used it, but he used the black one. The black one don't sound like the cream one. They yeah, they, they do sound crazy. different. They be different they versions. Different. Yeah, yeah, they sound different, yo. Like they sound totally different. The yeah. green one got the more, the low end is bigger, it's got, it's harder. The uh, that? black one is more, yo, so you don't want to see my phone. I turn my shit off. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, let me uh, throw that on airplane mode with the Wi-Fi. Oh, there, airplane Yeah, you good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nah, man, but the black one, sounds, the black one to me sounds totally different, man. It sounds totally different. Yeah, any any different version of them joints do be sounding different, man, because that's, that's basically what they did, is they, they yeah. would and sometimes they wouldn't even tell you. It wouldn't even be like, oh, if it sounded different, it would be like Mach 2, Mach 3, Mach, you know what I mean? Yeah. But nah, they don't be telling you all the time. It may be nah. something on a chip on the inside that say Ref B, Ref C, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. That's how, <laughs> you know? that's how Universal Audio is. Universal Audio put out a piece. Mm -hmm. You could be getting the same piece a year from now. It's a totally different Rev inside of it. So yep. they change yep. one, that one component. Change, change everything. Yep. Yeah, change the whole sound of everything. You like, damn! I thought I got stereo pay. You don't, man. So it's like, yeah, that should be weird, man. That should be definitely wild, man. Definitely. I see you got it's... heavy keyboards though in your back, though. I see you. Heavy yeah, keyboards. man. I'm I'm always jumping into synth stuff, man, and and whether it's modular or you know regular synth stuff, and then yeah. uh, you know I'm I'm lucky enough to, you know, and and I could be preaching to the choir here, but you know get lucky enough to have alliances with certain companies that make certain things and then I'll get yeah. stuff, you know, whether it be for review or whether it be for testing or whatever it might be. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm heavy into sense and stuff. So yeah, I need um, to get into sense, man. That's one thing I lack at. I don't have sense. I don't, I ain't got none. And stuff. <laughs> For real. I got, yeah, I got everything. But it's all good though. You rock how you rock though. I mean, I, yeah. I've seen cats do damage without a cent yeah. in the house. Then I've seen yeah, other cats have cents and not really do damage. So I mean, yeah, very <laughs> true, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's come down to a person's style, man, and how they rock. Mm -hmm. No question about that, man. I totally it is. Agree with that. This is true. Man, man. Totally agree with that, man. So yo, let me let me ask you, man, because I want to. I mean, I, I said. Um, but if anybody had watched this, that watched the last couple that I did, I started doing this because I wanted to start, you know, especially with the way things are locked down right now. I really want to talk to the artists and yeah. you know, just get back to the music and talk about people's background, maybe introduce people or just kind of get more familiar with artists that people may be familiar with. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so what I want to do is ask you, you know, a little bit about your your, your background as an artist, like how you get started and 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 doing music and stuff. Man, it's like, um, how can I basically put it, man? Getting started, to me, honestly, man, anybody who wants to be in this music game, man, you got to you gotta love it. Like, you got yeah, yeah. to take the money aspect out and don't go mm -hmm. in for that at first, man. The money's going to come if you love it. If you love it, it'll come. Q-Tip <laughs> said something like that. He was like, it's just focus on your music. Everything else will take music, care of man. itself. Yeah, Alchemist yeah. the same thing. Alchemist said, but I've been saying that forever. I'm like, yeah. dude, a lot of cats, this is how, this is how it usually rocks. A young kid gets in the game, or not even a young kid. He's a, a nigga, 20, 21 years old. Right, right, right. 
gets in the game, he raps in front of his friends, niggas think he's dope. He gets in the game, this nigga think he's gonna make millions in two days, the shit don't work, the nigga quits rapping. <laughs> then he told yeah, me yeah. Uh, how he used to be a rapper. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. That's how it goes, man. That's it. That's how his heart wasn't in it. That, to get mm-hmm. started, man, you gotta get started in the sense of like, you have to love what you do, man. Like, you have to go in there when you ain't got shit. That means that if you got one damn, uh, I mean, we in, we in 2020 now, so now it's more like, in a sense, we got computers. If you got one fucking program, man, this shit, man master that program. I mean, rock that shit like it's- That's the key, damn, master like, it. Yeah, master <laughs> it, man. Rock that shit like you like it's the fucking $100,000 program, man. Master that yeah, shit. Yeah. If you do that and your shit hot, people will come and just do it. Just put shit out. People are scared to put things out. So mm-hmm. when you start off, it's like, oh, I don't know if I want to put it. Nigga, just throw the shit out. Everybody yeah, had to yeah. start somewhere. Mm-hmm. somewhere, yo. But I'm true right now, yo. If you come into this game thinking you're gonna make a million dollars tomorrow, you're gonna be fucking sadly hurt. Like you yeah. I'm not <laughs> super it disappointed. That's right. I'm That's not right. It can't happen because it can happen. Mm-hmm. It can yeah. definitely happen. But the chances of that happening, you better have the best gimmick a nigga ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> right. You, you know, know, you mentioned you mentioned that like I was talking to Rashid Hadi yeah, yesterday. I that. That's kind of cool. I bought his album. That first one, I bought that shit. Uh, yeah. Like when iTunes first came out, I bought that yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. And that's what he was saying. He was like, yo, all I had was Cool Edit Pro. And I made yeah. that work. But then he moved up to Fruity Loops. But that's the key. A lot of times, too, um, there's two things. I won't say to what you said. People see the headlines and think they know the story. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they see the headline of somebody that blew up and they think they know. But they don't know anything about yeah. all the journey and all the work that you did to get to where you got to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> fucking journey, dog. Like. Yeah. Man, you know how many ups and downs I've had in my career where I've been mm-hmm. high up, then I've been low down, then I'm high up again. Like, bro, that's, <laughs> that's, that's right, that's right. The fucking game, dude. Like, I know I got people right now in my family, like literally, who just got in the game, and they like, damn, yo, what the fuck? I'm like, welcome to the music game. Like, this shit, yeah. yo, it's crazy, works. man. Yeah, that's how it works. That's why I said you gotta <laughs> do what you love. Man. I've been blessed. Like, I give you an example. Like, I've been doing this since I've been 15 years old. This is all, this is all I've ever done. I've never done anything else but music. I'm um, mm-hmm. multi platinum. I mean, I've had fucking. I mean, I just did Righteous Gemstones for HBO. I just did mm-hmm. the new Halloween movie that's coming out. I mean, I've done so much shit, man. I mean, I've done a lot and stuff. But the whole point, what I'm trying to say is that I'm still in this bitch. Like, I ain't got shit. Like, meaning, like, I, my mentality is yeah, still yeah. hungry. Like, I don't yeah. go in it like, okay, yo, we're going to make a, a, like a 30 million. Like, hands down, that, that comes, no question. My mm-hmm. mentality is more on some like Floyd Mayweather shit where I go in it. Like, nigga, I just want to destroy my competition. Like, whatever's yeah. in front of me, stay hungry. That nigga. Yeah, stay hungry, yeah. man. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm trying to say? So, that's how, that's my advice to the young youth who's, or even, I gotta say, young youth, because this nigga's like 27 who just started. Yeah, just trying ago. to get into it. Yeah, yeah whoever's cool. trying to get into this shit, yo, the whole point is, man, you gotta love what you do. You gotta love it, man, man. Like, when you get home from your nine to five, you gotta be like, man, I can't wait to get home to get on these beats or rhymes or whatever. <laughs> that's right, that's like, right. You know what I'm saying? Sleep, like, drink, straight shit, up. Yo. I yep. put this way, when I was in when I was in ninth grade, I remember I never forget this shit. This shit stays with me to this day. I had ten dollars in my pocket and I went to my Spanish teacher. I said, damn, should I get some food or some records? And she was like, Well, <laughs> shit, you could shit out food, but the records are always stay. And I was like, <laughs> your Spanish teacher told you. Spanish teacher told me that, yo. And I was like, yo, that's the truth, yo. So that, yeah, that yeah. mentality always kept in my head, man. Like Yo, I loved it that much that I would not eat that day just so I could fucking get a record. Like that's that's fucking dedication, nigga. Like you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I don't see a lot of niggas who can do that shit nowadays, man. That's like, true. That's true. It that don't shit. really exist that way nowadays. Hell no, it's given to them, yo. Just come on, yo. Let's put it this way: me and you were on the same age, right? So check this out. Mm-hmm. When we first came up to get a drum machine, nigga, you had to get an MPC, which cost like two thousand dollars. Who the yeah. fuck had two thousand dollars? That like had two thousand dollars, and you did like, for real. You know, y'all <laughs> There's just, no y'all way. Programs now, where you can just go on a crack site and download, it, and all of a sudden you you a fucking the one a producer. It is a lot of shit, man. And a lot of y'all got distinguish between what's a beat maker and a fucking producer. It's two different worlds. Yeah. Man. Like yeah, yeah. you know, I this talk about that a lot too. I it's talk about truth. that a lot. I don't think people realize that kind of stuff. There's a distinction. There's a big um, distinction. And, and sometimes, sometimes uh, for some folks that just do it all, they may not think about it. Mm-hmm. But then cats that's coming up and still learning think yeah. that, you know, it's all the same. Nah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just because you make a dope beat, don't mean you can make a dope record. Two mm-hmm. different fucking worlds, yo. I'm yep, gonna be so yep. with you. That, it's two different worlds, yo. 
completely, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, I yes, hear example, like with me, all, all the projects, like for instance, um, like for instance, my whole career, I've always been focused on production, 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 production. To meaning, like, okay, after I do the beat. Now we gotta get the song. Once we get the song, now we gotta get the the, the uh, mix. Once we get the mix, now it's the master. You feel what I'm saying? Make mm-hmm. sure that shit all comes cohesive. Okay, what's the concept? What's the graphics? Like, there's a whole science to this shit. Like, it's just yeah. it's a whole science to how you do it. But not to jump on things, man. I wanna get back to the point where how spoiled niggas are nowadays. <laughs> you know, for real. Right, back right. Back in the days, getting an NPC was a luxury. Meaning, like, if you had an NPC in your neighborhood, the whole fucking neighborhood knew. That means that yeah, every, yeah. niggas would travel boroughs to come and be like, yo, this nigga got an NPC. Like, Bro, I'm from saying? Chicago, and it's the same thing. Like, I remember just... Right, that's why I started making beats, because I got... I was like, yo, I'm running all over Chicago for the next cat that got an MPC, <laughs> like, I'm just producer, you, and, and then yeah. I wasn't finding the chemistry. So then I was like, I okay, cats is, is dope at what they doing, but I'm not finding that chemistry. And I'm like, so, you know, uh, this weekend I'm on the north side at, at this one dude spot that got a, then I'm on the south side, then I'm on the west side, I'm in the suburbs, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, but you're right, it was like few people had stuff. If you had, I'll put it this way. When I was coming up, if I saw, if I went to a dude's house and he had an MPC 60 or SP 1200, in my mind, I didn't have to hear a beat that he did. I knew this nigga had to be nice. Yeah, so yeah. That's right. Because you dedicated. You went all out. You nice, man. Like, in my mind, I'm serious. In my mind, I ain't had to hear not one beat. Yeah, but in my yeah. head, I'm like, man, this nigga probably nasty, yo. Like, for real. <laughs> and, 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 every, and, and the whole point is this, man. Even when the, with the NPCs, people got this mis like people rewrite history now. So bullshit, man. Like yeah. people it's think a lot of revisionist NPC, history. Yo. Yeah, people think the NPC was like the foundation shit. It wasn't. Only rich motherfuckers could get an NPC, or if you had to save up your money to get one, a lot of niggas was getting like ASR tens. Yep. ASR tens was like a poor man's three thousand. Like real shit. That's real. Right? That's real. It was dope that yeah. we had, like, all the Wu records, all the Alchemist. Right? I mean, everybody. That's why yeah. you see all these top producers like Timbaland, Neptune. All the niggas had an ASR because that's what they probably could afford. Like, that's exactly. It was like, more like, affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Three thousand was like a, like a, that was like the Bentley of drum machines and shit. The MPs, top like, of the damn hill, straight up and down. It was the top of the hill. Shit, man. You know how I put it this way. You know how niggas. Um, how can I basically put it down? The MPC 2000 is how the MPC 1 is now. It was a cut down version of all the other shit. And yeah. niggas, you got it, it came with no outputs, and you had to make it work. Like you found it came with no outputs. It didn't come with the effects card. It, I yeah. mean, there was a it lot was of dry. stuff. Was was a, did you have to put SCSI in it, too, if you yeah, wanted yeah, to put it? So yeah. it's like you was an erector set. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was dry, yo. And yeah. the whole point is, you could be one of them cheap niggas, but oh, I was going to use my, my disc, nigga. You'd be a whole box of floppies yeah. like one beat. Like, that's all yeah. a lot of you niggas don't know nothing about that, man. And that's what makes niggas like me, you, our shit not. And that's why we take yeah. such advantage of the new shit. Like, I told my homeboy that, that's a damn, dude. I'm on the X now, and I never thought in a million years I'd be honest, but it's so fast. I'm like, yeah. where do I come from? You start moving around, man, you'll be like, damn, I don't even necessarily want, because I want to, okay, I use my 60 every now and then. A lot of times I've used it for sound design and stuff, but you know what it is? Despite the fact that I love it, like I'm just moving around faster on the X or the Force. You know what I'm Bro, saying? I'm going to be real with you, man. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I told my homeboy DJ June the other day, I said, man, I ain't touched my 1,000 in like months. And that yeah. to anybody, to my fans who've been following me forever, know that that's like my machine of choice yeah. and everything, yo. Like for real, like I, I destroy niggas with that machine. But the whole <laughs> point is, yo, like once I got to these new ones, I was like, man, so fast. And I do little tricks now. Matter of fact, I even let niggas know, like for instance, I used to be like, man, these new machines sound like shit. We mm-hmm. need to get the, um, they don't sound as good as the old ones. But what I did was, a little trick I did was, I just used my outboard, I used my interface as the outs in the back now. So I don't even mm. the outs on the back of it. I just yeah. use the interface outs and go back into my gear and come back out because I okay. know the interface outs are beast. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I rock it. And that's what's up. But that's how I do it. But like I said, man, I like I like the MP. I, I've come up on the MP. That's what I learned from. But the mm. MP history is totally, if you let these new niggas tell it, it's not, that's not the history, yo. That's not yeah. how it that's yeah, not it's crazy. Old, That's well, not you know what it is, because because cats idealize and romanticize the idea of that vintage gear that yeah. was used by the producers that we all love. So then they kind of idealize everything, 
and it comes out silent, it, it, the history began, begins to be a little skewed at that point. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of, you know what it is too, man. Like you just said, a lot of these dudes, man, they read it. They didn't live it. They wasn't there. They didn't see it. So they read right. it. Yeah. So I, yeah. You know, I've seen this is no bullshit. I've I, I've heard stories about producers using certain gears that I'm like, these niggas probably use that shit for one fucking record. Like, there's no way. Yeah. <laughs> you know what That's right. That's they right. Tell it, they tell it, then they tell it to that person. The next thing you know, they're gonna come and tell you, nah, so and so use this, like. Nah, bro. That's yeah. what I'm saying, like, I come to terms, man. Yo, dope beats a dope beat. I don't give a fuck if you did on your iPad to the MPC. That's true. Oh, and that. nowadays, that's more true than ever, right? Yeah, like because there's so you got you got the vintage stuff, you got the the more newer stuff. You got whether you you know machine gang or MPC gang. Then you got the Ableton stuff. You got all these yeah. iPad apps. You got even these other smaller machines that people won't even talk about. Whether it's uh, SP 404s or the whole SP rolling SP series of stuff. Yeah. There's tons of stuff out there. I mean, I. I've, I know a couple cats that still get busy on, on like an MV8000. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, I, I never touched that machine, man, to be honest with you. I've seen it, and that shit just looked weird. <laughs> it did. It, it weird, always looked weird. I, I was yeah. pursuing it, and then um, I yeah. ended up with a 5000 around that time. But, uh, yeah, there was a point where I remember, you know, that was early on. My man was like, yo, I got this 2000, but I've been looking at that that eight mm -hmm. that MV8000, and, you know. Yeah. I think it just came and went before anybody, and at least in my close circle, had a chance to grab one. But remember the beat, um, thing? <laughs> mm -hmm. remember so, beat thing? Yeah, the beat thing. The beat thing. Yeah, I never used that thing. I, I, I never used, used it either, but I got some homeboys that did, and and I've well, I haven't actually used it. I've held it in my hand and checked it out. Yeah, I, I never that. really dig dig the look <laughs> but mm -hmm. i've heard that like it feels like a precursor to a lot of the stuff that's happening now and say mm -hmm. the mpc live like it had a battery it had yeah. you know certain digital inputs and you know headphone jacks two headphone jacks you know yeah. what i'm saying internal hard drive instant switching of of kits and stuff and it was a it was a beast. I, I personally just didn't uh, dig the the look and stuff. But let me ask yeah. you, like you you mentioned when you was fifteen, is that when you kind of made your first beats or started saying, nah, "Yo, I'm, I'm about to do this." No, nah, what happened was when I when I first of all, I've always been into music forever, and I'm not one of them niggas to be like, "Oh, like you ever you ever read niggas bio and laugh?" <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know, you know, everybody's like, bio star when they was yeah, five. <laughs> knew I was in there. Get the fuck out of here. Like, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, the whole point with me, though, was that I grew up in the, I grew up in the era. So it's like, it's my life went like this, man. I, in every era that changed, I happened to be there when it did it. Like, yeah. and, and when the Nas era, the Wu-Tang era, the mm -hmm. Mob era, I was in Queens. So I was there. I seen it. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I'm in this era. You don't yeah, know. You did. Era, yeah, you witness did. it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know you're in a, in a dope era until the era leaves and you look back at it. Like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? So yeah, I was yeah. I, mean, I wanted to be a DJ. All I wanted to do was be a battle DJ. I didn't want to mm -hmm. be a producer. I just wanted to get two turntables and battle everybody on the man and go to the DMC and win the world. <laughs> that no was doubt. my goal. Like that was my. I wanted to be like Rock Raider and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hubert and all them niggas. That, that was my goal. I didn't care about production. That shit wasn't even on my mind. And what happened was, I come from an entrepreneurial family. My dad said, "Yo, why play somebody else's record when you can make your own?" Word. So that, that the light bulb kicked in. So. um Long story short, he was like, he was real heavy in, in getting me in production because he, he knew how DJ shit was. He was like, man, getting the production, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, so long story short, he caught me an MPC. And when I got to 2000, it just sat there for months, man. I didn't know that shit was so complicated. There was no. <laughs> that's true. Like that shit, <laughs> you had to live with that yeah. joint. You know, you had to be just sitting with it. And hopefully you had a homie. <laughs> you know, man, I had nobody who knew how to use the shit. So I had to read the manual. Yeah. Man, complicated, man. And then he just like, yeah, man, it took like, it was like six months. It just sat there. And he was like, yo, man, I'm going to sell this shit. And I wound up just starting to use it, man. And then I started getting nice on it. Yeah. And then, um, I had my first record out when I was my first official radio. I had my first record like that fluctuated through radio around 16, 17. Okay. I had my first radio record where it was fluctuating through radio like niggas knew who I was type shit. You feel what I'm saying? Because when yeah, I yeah. Was, my DJ skills at radio and started DJing on the radio a lot. And so, okay. you know oh, did we lose you just now? Oh, yeah. No, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. 
right, cool. Yeah, so now, <laughs> so I started DJing through the radio and shit like that. So I played my records and shit. And then um, what happened was I ran into an artist, did a record on him, and the shit blew up and became huge and stuff. So you gotta figure, I started producing at 16. I had like a semi hit at 18. Mm -hmm. I signed at 19. And then that was the story of my life. That was how my whole career panned out from there. So I was kind of destined to be a producer. I was destined to do this shit. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah. And I, and I actually love what I did, man. And I, and the whole point I be trying to tell niggas, like, when I was when I, when I'm, when I I was doing this production shit at a young age, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing with these machines at the time. It was just more like, I just knew what I wanted. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Yep. And, stuff, and that's how it basically was, yo. And so for real. It wasn't until I got, like, the 1,000 when I really started just, like, like freaking that shit to say, okay, now I got it. Like you found, yeah, it yeah, now. yeah. You you found yeah. your your groove right yeah. there, there. Nah, you because yeah. some machines and stuff resonate more so than yeah. any yeah. other. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I had a two thousand XL, and I think part of it was that it was my first time having a a, a any kind of groove box or drum machine sampler yeah. of my own. You know what I mean? And you know, it's one thing when I'm when I'm at my man's crib and he got a, a two thousand. I'm sitting with him. And he leave the room or something to go whatever he's doing. I'm jumping in and do a little something. Hey, you know what I mean? You don't really, really know what you're doing. Then it, it took me that. To, yeah. If you come to your crib and you live with that shit. Yeah, that's exactly. Game that's game, when it, things change oh, at that point. Game, dude. Like for real. Yeah. But the funny thing about it, I was telling my homeboy, Darko, this other movie was laughing about because I'm like, yo, I didn't even know how to use the tap tempo button. I remember my <laughs> homeboy, <laughs> this is like, 10 years later, this nigga said, man, you can just tap the tempo and do it. I was like, oh, shit, that's what that is? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's saying, you know, that reminds me, I was at a, I was at a homeboy's house. I know I had two guys who had MPC. Well, they probably was 3,000s at that point. Uh, yeah. so I was in Evanston in Chicago, just north of Chicago in Evanston. And I had another homeboy that lived on the west side of Chicago who had an a MPC. Well, I was at one cat's crib. He had just got it. And and all his beats was sounding, you know, it's like really a high. little. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, yo, the elements that you put in there is dope, but the drums are kind of like robotic. It, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm used to hearing some, some fill and some swing. And he yeah. was like, yo. It don't matter how I play it, it locks it in like this. And that was so early on. I remember calling my man like, yo, why this thing locking my man's drums in <laughs> and like oh, this? Yeah. And he had to turn the, the, the time correction off or put it yeah. to a proper, like, you know, 116th or, or 32nd or something. And once he got that, it's like we was up all night after that. It's like that little thing changed everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel I put it this way. When I learned the tap tempo button, I learned the swing function because I didn't know that existed either. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Know, the swing menu is in there. And I was like, oh <laughs> shit. But when I had caught my when I had caught my 1000, I think I think I had I think the reason I really freaked that machine so much is because it was like I kind of saved up to get it. Like I had just mm -hmm. finished up the projects and I took the money to buy that. And it was like it was mine. Like you found trying to say and niggas yeah. were working up on it like that. Niggas was dissing the one. Yeah, thing. yeah. Like, that was your joint. Yeah, that was mine. Like, you yeah. know, so it's like, yo, I just went on a ballistic beat. I mean, my whole career just went up, 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 up and up after. Like, I did so much shit after that, man, on that machine, yo. That's yeah. why you feel me now. I'm so shocked that I'm not on it because I've been on that machine all the way till about three months ago. Yeah. And yeah. I was saying, you know, it's time for me to adjust to the new shit now. Like, now that I know. You know, I got my ear how to mix. I'm like, okay, yo, I need to start adjusting to the new shit now because it works faster. I got yeah. you know, like I don't have time to sit there and do this. Time shit. is money, and you got to keep it moving and be efficient. That's what that's what my man uh, D still was telling me when I interviewed him last week, and he was like, yo, the thing for me is that I got to be able to move if efficiently and move quick. It's not even necessarily about being able to say I'm finished and I'm the quickest dude, but because you get paid what you get paid yeah, exactly. and you got to be able to not spend all your time messing around because the longer you spend on something the less you get paid depending on how you're getting paid and it oh, just you need to manage your time or so i get that that's dope i agree 100 i remember um i remember uh who was it p rock said that after he get off the sp 1200 he'd be exhausted mm -hmm. and i agree like that's <laughs> right. a lot of old machines man you don't notice it because you grew up on them so you're using them but when you get to the newest stuff, you start knocking out stuff like one, two, three. Like, okay, yeah. let me knock it out, and I can still keep my sound by you know tweaking things here and there, and making it yeah. right. Yeah. Besides that, man, yeah, this works faster for me, man. I can put out faster projects. Like right now, I'm about to drop this Donnie Darko album, 
which mm-hmm. is a piece, you know, a lot of his fans been waiting for, a lot of my fans are waiting for it. And after that, I got an instrumental album dropping. Okay. Another album, album dropping, you feel what I'm saying? So it just been like like that, man. I've been heavy just focusing on a lot of production and just a lot of movie stuff too, getting movie placements. And that's that's dope, man. That's dope. So how do how those kinds of placements come about? Is it just, you know, connections that you've made throughout the years and starting to come together or new yeah. connections? Well, thank God, man. I just been I was prayed about a lot of stuff, man. It came to, you know, it came to fruition, you know, like it hit me up and stuff like mm-hmm. for real. Like I got the righteous gemstones, they hit me up. And okay. so I got the connection from that. Then that connection led to Halloween and that connection now led to other things. Like you feel what I'm saying? Beautiful. So, That's beautiful. Like that, but you know what though? Pre- so 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 what is it? Precious gems or what is it again? Uh, righteous gemstones. Righteous gemstones. Is that yeah. the, the joint with uh what's his name? Uh what's who's um the comedian dude, I forgot that. Yeah, dude. yeah, 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 yeah. Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Is it Adam Sandler? Adam Sandler? It's the nigga with the mullet. I forgot his damn name. Hold on. What's the dude's name? Let me see if I can Google it real quick. This is where, this is where 2000 yeah. comes in at. Yeah, no, I, I I think we talk about the same dude. It's, it's, no, it's the same dude. And so I'm almost sure it's the same dude, Joe. It's got like John Goodman in it. Oh, Danny McBride. That's what it is. Danny McBride. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's dope. I was just watching something. Um, I was just watching something or maybe I seen a trailer or something and the music was ominous and heavy. And so that makes sense that, you know what I mean? Like, like that's yeah. your flavor, really. Like that's the kind of lane you yeah. ride in. Yeah, that, that. That's what I'm saying. yeah. So I can yeah. see them coming at you like, yo, we want this sound. We want what you doing. Yeah, yeah. so dope. I basically rock, man. So I rocked it like that and just like kept it moving, man. So, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm waiting for this Halloween. So they already picked the tracks. Okay. So okay. Be like, okay, yeah, we we got this one, this one, and this one. So I know Winter Music Five uh should be on there and a couple other joints should be on there. So that's good. To me, I like to me, like real talk, I'm grateful for everything. That mm-hmm. thing, to me is like legendary because it's like a John Carpenter film. So that goes down to history. Right. Like, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And then, then that's a springboard too. Things that becomes like a, a, a tree trunk. Things start to sprout from that. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, man. Like no yeah. more, like uh three years ago I was on the Simpsons and so mm-hmm. we had a had a thing called the no. Tree of Horror. Yeah, no bullshit. They had a thing called the Tree of Horror Core. Okay. It was on the bottom. They had me in the same poetry, and I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, <laughs> like, well, so, so let's talk about that, though, Sue, because I, I uh, what is it? Ghetto metal. Yeah, ghetto metal. Yeah. And so, 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 what's up with ghetto metal? You created ghetto metal, and and I was listening to it. It goes hard. Yeah, it goes hard, yo. What ghetto metal is is this, man. Think of the most violent, most brutal, most sadistic most fucked up thing on the hip-hop side that's so brutal and gangster mixed with the most violent most sadistic most fucked up most brutal shit on the metal side mixed with a a, a dab of body count salt and yeah 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 together, and that's ghetto metal that's like, what's you know up man? that's, that's what it is. Up hardcore energy i don't give a fuck politically incorrect i mean all that shit i mean yeah what you want and keep it moving like that's ghetto metal yo and that's my shit that i created the term has always been there Mm-hmm, my mm-hmm. homeboy Uwe, who's uh who's gone now, rest his soul, he's gone. He's the one who gave me the term because I always had the sound, but I never had the term ghetto metal. Right, right, right. Know, that's like that's ghetto metal right there, because that's what he was doing. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. So I took it and put that term on top of my sound. Cause real talk, man, I didn't really start listening to hip hop until like probably 94, 95. Okay. All okay. before it was all like metal records, man. Like, okay. Like, yeah, it's all that. That's why you can hear it. That's why my ghetto metal shit is so ill like that. Yeah. You can't. You, yeah, you gotta have an ear. For you, it. you, you. Well, see that. That's the thing. So, and I, what I, what I can relate to is the fact that I do mod bap and I've done this style yeah. and I gave it a name and then I started realizing other cats were doing similar things, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. So, having given it a name, it takes on a certain life of its own. It's a zone, but somebody was telling me, it's like, so what makes a good, like, mod bap? Well, how do you make good mods? Like, well, you know, it's the, the core of it is hip hop. So if you didn't make good hip hop, you probably ain't gonna make good mod bap. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the thing with what you're saying. You actually are a fan and love metal. So, like, you know what I'm saying? So, so that's, you gotta know that in order to be able to, to bring that into, into the beats and stuff. I put it this way, I'm not like these new niggas. You ever see these fucking kids? This shit pisses me off. You ever see a nigga wear like a, a um I, I don't like Metallica, them niggas suck ass, but I'm just mm. putting in general. 
Yeah. You ever see a, a hip hop dude with a Metallica shirt on? And I, I always go to these niggas like, name me one Metallica song. Yeah, yeah, that they, they can't do that. Like, they, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. Like, if you're gonna wear a band shirt, where yeah. that you know at least a couple of the songs. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, be a fan. Like, <laughs> be a fan of it. Like, I would never do no shit like that. Y'all think so yeah. cool and stuff, yo. But nah, so that's how I was, man. I grew up on metal, then I got into hip hop, then I went back into metal. Okay. Around, like, 2000. Ooh, like 2002, 2003, I went back into it heavy. Dope, dope. I went back into it real heavy and stuff, yo. Because it's so funny. Like, I see Skrillex, right? And I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, that's the dude from, uh, I forgot the name of the band, uh, from First to Last. Mm -hmm. But he was in First to Last first, and then he became Skrillex. Okay, and dope, like, dope. So shit. when you do your, your stuff, when you combine in those two, do you bring in a, a guitarist or do you sample guitar riffs? Sample, or? Okay, yeah. okay. okay. My whole my whole shit is like this, man. When hip hop first started, niggas started taking the breaks, and that became hip hop. Yeah, so they would play the whole record, mm -hmm. and then when that break came, everybody would go crazy for that break. Okay, that exactly, that's the sweetest part. The same entirely for metal, man. The, the yeah. break. Once I get yeah. to the break, and I find that break that just makes everybody go, "Oh shit!" That's, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's, so that's the part I want, and then I take that. That's the that's the DJ hip hop mind. I mean, take that part, yeah. the drums, knock it out, make it how I want to make it, and boom. But it's a formula to it, man. I've heard niggas try it and the shit is trash. Mm -hmm. like, I'm the only, it's only a few of us who could really hone that shit in and make it be like really banging where the drums knock, the guitars are still there. Like, yeah, the yeah. Too, they put the drums up front and the guitars are way under. And yeah, so, yeah. Man, that shit is like whack, yo. And stuff. Mm -hmm. like, yo. And, I, and I personally, this is real talk. I'm saying this for everybody. I think rap metal, like the term rap metal or what rap metal is, I think that shit is like, it's, uh, it's trash, man. I never thought yeah. that shit was good. And stuff. That's why I thought the ghetto metal shit was so brutal because it was like hardcore. It's almost like that's what it's supposed to be, what they meant it to be. <laughs> they couldn't. Yeah, do it. Like, that, that's the way I feel about. With uh, there was a lot of people that tried like blending jazz and hip hop, but before Tribe Called Quest came along, and they didn't even really talk about this is jazz and hip hop too much. But the <laughs> fact is, it was just the perfect blend you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah. and and when you look back you like I, I remember looking back in the in the 90s and thinking about like it was a lot of cats talking about jazz and hip-hop then you even had some old jazz heads trying to grab some random hip-hop yeah. dj and yeah. trying to do stuff and it was just like yo this that it was the softest shit you ever wanted to hear you know what i mean yeah. like I, i'll put it this way to a lot of hip-hop heads they're gonna probably like try to hack my page and say you fuck i hate you I just, <laughs> I just, I just first gangster album Remember when Premier was doing a lot of the jazzy shit? I thought that yeah. was like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right, right. Yeah, you could, but see, with, with almost any producer, you can always tell when they come into their own. You know what I mean? Hard to earn is when he came into his own. To me, yeah, hard to like, earn was next level. It was Premier, like yeah. Maybe, and it was like I understand you just bought a drum machine trying to figure shit out. Like I totally understand. Right, right. Like, nah, it's not really a style. I could tell that I was very um guru influence because mm -hmm. he was into the job. I could tell. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's also too also that makes me feel like that's why Guru kept going back to the well with the Jasmine tag. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. it had its it had its lane. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it wasn't yeah. like gang star music though. Nah, I totally agree. Yeah. Like, like I said, that's a good example right there. But I think that I personally think Tropical Quest took the whole jazz thing though to a whole nother whole they nother level, man. Actually, good mm -hmm. in a jazz sample, but in your mind, you don't know that's a jazz sample, but it's really a jazz sample. Right, and right. And flipped it with hard SP drums and just made that shit just knock. And like, they made it knock, that? and that's the thing that engineer uh, Bob Powers. Like I yeah. feel like I feel like you know how they always talk about with the Beatles, it was a fifth Beatle or there was a black uh -huh. Beatle. Like Bob Powers yeah. to me was the other Tribe Called Quest dude <laughs> because he that's shaped true. the sound just as much as Q Tip and and then was making the beats and putting together these songs. Like Bob Powers shaped that sound in a way. That made yeah. you know Midnight Marauders come alive and so forth and so on. You low end theory and all that stuff. In my opinion, I thought Midnight Marauders is their best one. In my opinion, I think that's I always go back and forth between the Love Movement and Midnight Marauders, but I think I think Midnight Marauders has gotten the most spin from me. I did not like that other thing, like Beats, Rhymes, and Life. I love the title, but I did not like that oh, album. Was that the latest one? Nah, the Love Movement was the last one. 
uh, and and ironically enough, uh, Beats, Rhymes, and Life was the album that came just before Midnight Marauders, which is when Dilla started producing with and for them. Oh. And and they had Faith Evans on the song, and it felt very R and B. And I was just kind of like, oh. yeah, yeah. They had the yeah. they had the limited edition album cover with the reflective yeah. thing with the red, black, and green lady with a flag. It was it was a trip. But I, hold on, I digress. Let me get back. <laughs> Let me, I want to know more about DJ Bless. Nah, you good, man. <laughs> I digress. I digress. So, um, the, okay, so your creative process though. Like when you, so you just talked a little bit about how you, when you search for albums, you search for a, a certain part. And do you typically start with like melodic, melodic content or do you typically start with like drum content, stuff like that when you create? Okay, when I'm doing my beat, when I do a beat, first of all, I get the sample. So I got the sample on my drum machine. I pick, this is what, okay, this is how, to me, this is advanced production. And then you mm -hmm. have, there's no rules. So anybody who's listening to this, there's no rules to this shit. Yeah. Do however you want. This is how I do. And this is how right. I do more advanced. When I was first starting out, I would have kits. And I would say, okay, these are my kits. I'm only going to use these drums for every damn beat. These are my kits. Mm -hmm. As I got more advanced, I started picking out the drums that match the samples more and going yeah. more. So yeah. that's where I'm at now. I, I get a sample. like, And the whole point is I listen to the same music I sample. That's how I be finding them. Yeah, I, yeah. I, put, I listen to that music. So I listen to it. I'm like, oh, damn, that's a dope-ass sample. And I put it in my folder, go sample the part I want, get the drums I want. And then I start off with the drums. First, I get the sample tuned to how I want it. Yeah. Then I start off with the drums first, but I mute the sample completely. I do mm -hmm. not play it. I don't do the sample on top of the drums, like have the sample playing. I'm playing drums. I can't do that and stuff. Like, that's oh. crazy because I can't do it that way. Like Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I guess I could, but if I got the melody, I'm playing the drums to the melody, unless I just start with the drums by themselves. See, there's a reason why I do that. So this is how I rock it. So in my head, I already hear the sample playing. So I'm doing the beat. I do everything. Okay. And for me, once the drums, the hi-hats, once all that is done, me personally, I like to surprise myself of how dope the beat is. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. So when you beat. drop it in. That's You feel what I'm saying? That's how I'm like, okay, I got That's it. dope. That's like, dope. Yeah, that's for me. I like that's how I surprise myself to be like, ooh, that just sound hard. Yeah. And I got yeah. The ooh face. Once you get the ooh face with it, then it's like it's, it's already you know it. You know it already. Yeah. yeah. Man, but if you don't get the ooh face, it's like <laughs> you gotta go to the next. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of going, it's like going to be the beat category over there. <laughs> that's right, right. And that's how I basically do. I like to surprise myself. So I start mm -hmm. off with my drums first. I lay all my drums out. Then I put the sample. And but I used to do it how that the way you do it, where I had the sample playing and put the drums on it. Yeah. So I used to do that, but now I do it this way, man. I just like the, the surprise of how it sounds. That's dope, though. That's actually pretty yeah. dope. Yeah. You know, um, my man used to he, he my guy that taught me how to use the MPC, uh, my guy Trust. Um mm -hmm. He used to, when we would grab samples and we would build a beat around it and all that, he would drop the sample out and be like, that's what we made. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, it, and I remember thinking like, damn, that is that is dope and stuff. But So yeah. let me also ask you, um, you also uh, engineered, you not just, yeah. you don't just produce, you DJ, your artist, a producer, but you engineer too. And mm -hmm. I, I also kind of want to talk to you about like how you went from uh, doing the engineer thing to like, you know, I was at NAM, I see your face up on the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so this is how it was, man. I've been with the, um, and my, like, this is how my, my, um, my career went. I started off with a, uh, Ray C. Ray C did all the cash money records and stuff. Okay. So he did all, he did drop it like it's hot. He did, I mean, all of all the top songs he did. So he's the first one that started, I started shadowing under and stuff a couple of times. You feel what I'm saying? To see how to start like mixing and stuff. This is back when I was like 18 or so, yo. And um, I started with him first. And then after that, I went to Dexter Simmons. And then I went to Prasada. I met Prasada when I was like 20. Okay. Stuff. I, went to, I met him. You know what I'm saying? Got a couple of tips from him. But what happened was this, man. Long story short. Every mixed engineer I went to, no matter how hot they were, except for Ray C, Prasada, and them, they could not get my sound the way I wanted it to. Like, no matter what, they just couldn't do it. Like, it just... It was a certain way I want things, and they just couldn't. It was like, it was like you had to almost be in my mind to see what I wanted. It was like it was hard for me to translate. I didn't know free. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I just knew what I wanted and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I didn't do it. So long story short, I had to start just mixing my own shit. You know what I'm saying? So what I started doing was just practicing my own shit. And then number two, another thing too. See, there's another thing. 
engineers now and mixers now, I don't know what the price rate is going for for a lot of these dudes, but back then, mm-hmm. nigga, I had to pay a thousand dollars for one song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah I believe it. <laughs> you add yeah. up a whole album, nigga. You, yo, you better. Learn you out some loot. You bro. better be dedicated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah never come out. That's like, right. So I started learning how to mix by hiring other people. So mm-hmm. I would hire them and then watch how they do it. And then I would just practice, 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 practice. But I didn't right. really get really nice until I started learning frequencies. Once I learned mm-hmm. frequencies and what does what, then what does what and what lives where in the frequency yeah, spectrum and that kind man. of thing. Dude, yeah. Everybody who comes to me is like, yo, I want to start learning how to mix an engineer. I'm like, yo, learn a frequency chart. Mm-hmm. Go and Google a frequency chart and see where everything sits at. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because you're going to run into shit where you're going to be like, damn. Plus, if you sample, you're going to be like, Damn, the tip of the sample is killing this and this. You got to figure out how to take yeah, that. Yeah, them frequencies start canceling one another yeah. out and all kinds of stuff and phasing and all kinds of craziness. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I started doing, man. I started learning how to mix like that because niggas was not, they, they didn't know how to how to mix my stuff. It was too expensive. And I had so much um product coming out that only I can do it. So, you know yeah. And I actually, in the midst of all this, had hired someone else to do it, and it still didn't come out the way I wanted it to. So yeah, yeah. I was just content that I'm going to do this. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So I did all my mixing and everything. And then my homeboy, um, Jeremy, taught me how to master. He did all the Kanye stuff. Okay. He how to master. And I'm still, now that's a phase I'm still learning about. Like, I know yeah. how to do it, but I still leave that to the professionals like him. Like, Jeremy loves being all of them. That's a serious art form right there, the mastering thing. That's a serious art form. Art form. Like you can, I think, I think, for instance, you can do some. Well, I won't even get into it. Like you could do some things. Like cats can do some things on their computers that somebody t- that they wouldn't be able to do. That like an yeah. engineer would be able to do with gear. But then when you go to somebody that's like a mastering engineer. Level, and they got a room outfitted for it and they got the outboard gear for it. It's a whole nother level of that stuff. And they and they are like artists in themselves. Yeah. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Yeah. See the thing um, like this, man, you can mix your record, get everything where you want to go, but remember it's your record. So to you, you don't hear nothing. Yeah. So the master engineer, and he's never heard your record. He don't give mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He's never heard your record. Right. So he hears the record, and it's like, okay, well, damn, this frequency is hitting here. He wants to, he has to enhance it. So he's mm-hmm. cleaning it up and enhancing everything so it sounds good. Because you want to be able to turn it up loud and not hurt your ears. That right. Like, it needs to be comfortable good. listening. It and it, it, it needs to sound just as good loud as it does not loud. Yo, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yo, that's what I'm saying. Everybody got their own technique, yo, to mm-hmm. how they master. Like I mastered with um I, I did Je- I mastered with Jeremy. I mastered with um there's a dude at Sterling, oh man, uh, the one who did all the Alchemist records. I mastered with him. Okay. I mastered with uh, Chris, the dude who did the Drake records. I mastered with him. So I've mastered with all, like, all my whole teachers have always been like the top dudes I learned from. And what I would do is take what I learned and incorporate it into what I do. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Like this year, like, real talk, this year I've been blessed to be endorsed by all these companies. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I've right, right. Mission. For my production and getting recognition for my mixing and stuff like that, to where these companies are like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know, I know how the shit rock, man. So they come, yeah. like, oh man, like, which one? Like, which one was it? you did? Uh, you, you, uh, you know, because we follow each other. You did yeah. something for them. You had a video that you did for them. Um, which one? Which one was it? Or maybe it was a couple, yeah. but I know it was that you get they got the 500 series joints. I was talking to you about their their 500 series. Oh, my West Audio, yeah. yeah, West Audio, yeah. yeah. West Audio is the truth, man. See, the thing about West Audio I like about them is they're innovative. See, I like to deal with companies that are innovative. Yeah. So the thing about them is they took the analog sound of how a, a machine sounds. Let's take it for example, an SSL bus compressor. Mm-hmm. So they took the insides of an SSL bus compressor and put a digital front. So basically, you get the best of both worlds. You get the analog sound, but you get the recall of the digital. So you have the plug-in, and then you have the piece. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you got to come back, and I'm telling you straight up, I ranted about this the other day. If you are a working engineer, and you mixing five to ten songs a week, 20 songs a week, sooner or later, you're going to have to recall something. And it's a Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's what's worth. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. So that's where West Audio comes in at, because... Everything is recallable. Like you could recall everything, yo. Like for real, you know what I'm saying? And they want, hey, there you go. And they wanted the um the first people to come, like one of the second people to come to me. You feel what I'm saying? The first one was uh, Handsome Audio. Okay. You know yeah. So yep. That was the first one, and now it's like with them, man. So it's it's been like really, 
really dope, man. Like for real, like like all these pieces here, like the Prometheus, that's their Poltec right there. So basically, you got a Poltec sound transformerless, and you can recall everything. I'm dope. gonna tell you what I'm gonna look at, yo. Look at the Hyperion. If you go back, the, the Hyperion. Hyperion right there, that mm -hmm. right there. Dude, that shit right there, man. What that is basically is a four band parametric EQ with high pass filter on it. And you can recall everything. You can use that for mastering, wow. mixing, vocals, drums. I mean, anything you want to throw at it, it can do and stuff, man. That shit is like, bro, like that shit lives on everything almost in my mix and stuff. Like it's really good, man. And like I said, I was um I had I was blessed, you know. They came to me. And yeah, stuff, gave me some pieces, man, and we rocked it, man, for real. I did a whole project with it. Mm -hmm. uh, even this joint that's on Halloween, like, um, I used their gear to do it, you know what I'm saying? So, that's uh, dope, that's cool. yeah, that's dope. So, yeah, it actually, and, and on the real, everything I've heard from you sounds good, bro. Thank and, you, um, and I'm sitting here with the uh, the Zulu, so I can attest. <laughs> to what yeah. the Zulu was about. Yeah. And when I first got it, I was like, I don't know. But the more I've had it and the more like I've kind of learned you every gear you sometimes have to kind of learn how and this is a passive Bro. box. So yeah, I had to I learn how to hit it right. You know what I mean? I got I got I gotta pull mine out, man. Yeah. I don't care, like, yo, this box right here, let me tell you mm -hmm. something, it lives on my drums. And yeah. so what this thing does, yo, I'm telling it smooths out your drum. If you're yeah. using Logic Pro X. Mm -hmm. Native instruments, um, what is it? Uh, MPC X, MPC Live, anything that's digital, anything that's analog. Yo, this yeah. smooth all that digital shit out. Like, it does. Know, it <laughs> Everything on my desk goes through that, and then yeah, the Apollo. Yeah, <laughs> then, you got, then you got the tape decks in the back. You can put all the yeah. different tape decks and stuff. I keep mine on the uh, cassette tape. Okay. I keep mine on cassette tape, and I mm -hmm. keep mine on uh, low, low deck and stuff. Yep, high yep. And low. And yo, it sits on my kick and snare, yo, and it really just does wonders for it, man. So, you know, all of it plays a role, man. Like all the yeah. gear works cohesively. Like everything I, that I have, it's all a purpose. It's not just to have it. Like you feel what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. I'm not. I don't like hoarding. So for me, it's more like if I'm not using it, I just get rid of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, using it is work, and it worked on my ghetto metal beats. I mean, everything, man. It's been doing really good. So I like it. It's really that's cool. what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, it's a it's a real dope joint, man. I can't say that enough. And I've gone through different things where I've gone and bought old real real joints, and while that has a place, you know, there's a certain thing that I like about like the old real real joint. I've done different plugins back yeah. back and forth, but nothing stuck like the Zulu. <laughs> yeah, I told you know? you, yeah, it's better than any plugin, man. Hands yeah. up. Another thing too, I was thinking the other day because I was pissed. I had to recall a mix, and I'm like, man, dude, I went on this big mental rant where I'm like, everybody want to be back on boards and tape machines until you got to recall some shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, That's shit. right. Yo, being on boards and oh man, yo, I want to get a a, a a a two inch reel of reel, nigga. Have to recall that shit if you got to recall it. And I want to. Yeah. See you gonna like it the same way. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's why I'm really proud, man. I only deal with shit that I know I can recall back. Yeah. yeah, you know I think about that kind of stuff a lot because I hear people like Questlove and them say like when they were doing the D'Angelo record Voodoo, they would just kind of be in Electric Lady Studio and just keep a reel, the two inch reel running all the time. I'm like, God damn, how much tape y'all had to go through? That's so just too. you know, that's very expensive, you know. And then, and then the idea of having to go back and recall where all that stuff is and pull it up, and then uh, you got the board, you got to pull all like yo, <laughs> I can't well, even I imagine. Way, man. I put it this way a lot of people are hyped on SSL, right? But mm -hmm. people fail to realize, and that's another thing that's what I'm saying people wrote the history completely wrong. SSL was only known for their recall. Nobody mm -hmm. gave a shit about the SSL board. It was the fact <laughs> that it was the only board that can recall. Right, so right. Recall. None of those boards can recall, but the SSL could. Yeah. And that was the main thing. It's like, oh man, you mixed on the SSL, but mm -hmm. and even the O2Rs. Remember the Yamaha O2Rs? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah. It, it was the recall. It wasn't the board. It was the recall. That's it. So My guy had the O2R. I think it was O2R. Did they? Because they had a few different versions of it. But I think yeah, he did I have the O2R. Them. I knew about them. Yeah, my homeboy used to mix on them. Yo, he used to mix on the O2R. And his biggest yeah. thing was I could automate and I could recall. See, that yeah, was that's it. Honestly, that, that, that thing was a little too advanced. I think sometimes I was like, yo, 
Couldn't we just go into a four track on a tape and call it one? <laughs> but it sounded great. It, I thought it sounded good, but it, it was like high quality. And the fact, yeah, you could just recall it and, and bring it back up. Yeah, you could recall. And the whole point, you had automation. So, yeah, yeah. If you're a hip hop producer, you're doing a bunch of drops. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, yeah. Like it drops. You know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm. You can't do that. You know yeah. what I'm so, you couldn't do that back then, man. So, that's why the SSL O2R, that's why they were so popular you feel yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. i've never seen one engineer mix an entire album with only the ssl like, <laughs> right no right way. Yeah, like, that's a lie they said they did like they had new yeah. Holtex, la two-way they had other shit like you feel what i'm saying yeah that's what's up that's what's up well hey man i want to um before we get out of here it's been a good conversation but you know i want to play another one of your joints as we on the way out uh let me see which one could we play here let me go back. I'm on your your band camp. You got a recommend I see there's a what's, what's this? There's a French one here, ain't it? What's this? I can't even say it's post. Oh no, you know what you hold on a second. I got you right here. Hold on a second. Let me see. We got bank. Let me go on my band camp. I got so many records on there, dude. Yeah, it's a lot of lot of joints. You got a you got a, a discography, man. You've been putting in work. Yeah, <laughs> no, I appreciate so. it, man. No, I definitely appreciate it. Now I'm gonna tell you what to play, man. Uh, stuff play. Um, my fact, yo, go, yeah, yo, go all the way down. Play shooter in the face. Shooter in the face. Okay, hold on. Yeah, play that one. So all the way down. Okay, hold on. Yeah, it's one of my older records. Yeah. Yeah, you can play that. All right, cool. Well, yo, before before I play that, man, I want to, like I said, thanks for coming through. It's been a good conversation, and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get a chance to do something uh, like this again at some point. Mm-hmm. Anytime you got stuff coming out, projects, whatever, uh, yeah. when, you, when uh, you're doing something with Donnie Darko or whoever you're working with, man, just holler yeah. at me, and uh, let's, let's get on here and talk about it, bro. No, I appreciate it, man. And I've been a fan of your beats for years, man. Cause I've been I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I've been a fan of your beats for years, man. And stuff for real. Like you got that that shit down. And stuff. Word. Man. Your side chain compression game is ridiculous. <laughs> 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 for real. I was just being in here experimenting until I hear what I like, and then I'll roll with that. Dude. You know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous, man. Do you use a four four? <laughs> huh? Do you use a four four? Uh yeah, I do use a four four a lot for the for the uh for the the effects and stuff. Um, so you, and you know, the thing is with me, the reason I do the music, the way I do it is because even when I first got my MPC, uh, learning how to flip samples, like the cats that I knew that had MPCs that didn't come as easy for me right off the bat. Like it was more, it came more natural for me to play some stuff, but then it wasn't as hard as when cats was flipping samples, you know what I'm saying? So then it took me, it took me years to really, learn how to flip samples but then when i got that kind of thing i started realizing like now i don't i feel like i couldn't take it to another place or something and kind of i always had this idea of stuff that i wanted to do that i couldn't really reach with just samples so then i started doing samples and playing sense stuff over the top of them what i was hearing sometimes you know sometimes you sample something and you'll hear little stuff in it that make you want to add something yeah. or you know what I'm saying? So I started kind of playing uh, to it and stuff. And after a while I was just like, yo, I'm going to start making weird sense stuff that I could flip like samples. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I recommend you something, recommend you something that you got to get, man. Um, mm-hmm. I see how your style is yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now, man. Are you getting into the 500 series stuff? I'm probably going to be getting into it but against my better judgment because I feel like it's a, a rabbit hole. It's, bro, it's a, it's a <laughs> section of this. You have to fill that box up. Like, you can't just leave the box empty. Like, <laughs> like, right. You can't have no spaces in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so weird, yo, seeing the space in the box. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you what you get, man. If you go that route, yo, get the Phoenix Audio um, Gyrator EQs. Okay. Stuff. Well, pick up those, man. I started using those. On I've, I've heard of those before. The Phoenix Audio Gyrator EQs. Yeah, the Gyrator EQ, man. Okay. Look up that. Yeah, if you can even pull it up, like that. That's the EQ you want to start off with. Get two of those, man, and stuff. Because what you'll do is you'll take those two, run your beats through it. Like plus, because your style, your style, you don't really track out everything. You kind of like 
Yeah, it's all just two track. Okay, dude, that was that's what you want. So what mm -hmm. you would do is run your beats through that first, and then to the Zulu. You found okay. so you would run it to that up the highs. He's got a sheen, um, a sheen band up the sheen on it. Take mm -hmm. out the light on it. Uh, take out like the mid frequency up the bass like a notch. Yeah, you drive that shit in there, dude, and you'll see a difference. Well, it, like, oh, it knocks too, man. It's got a mean low end. Like, okay, knocks, man. I actually started using that on my two bus. I used it for drums for the longest, but then I said, man, I need something on my two bus. So I took the uh, Prometheus off and put that to my vocals and, and other things. Okay, I need, some, I need automation for vocals. So I, got mm -hmm. automation. I need a recall for vocals. So I got so pissed when I had to recall something. <laughs> yeah, now you got to dial something back yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Hyperion and put that to vocals and took the Phoenix audio and put it on the bus. Dude, mm -hmm. it's, it's like really good, man. Like, it's really, it's got a sound, man. Like, it's dope. Okay. Like, it's really good, man. Okay, I see you here. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to check those out. That'll, that'll, I trust your, your word on that because I see how you get down. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to have to check man, those dope, out, man. man. It's dope, man. And after that, man, I will get a bus compressor and then after that, get the Hyperion. Okay. Like Hyperion is gonna let you dig in. So basically, when you like sampling something, it's like fuck. Like I can't. I gotta dig into it. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. What it, Hyperion to me is like a, a um. They started off trying to do an SSL style, but then mm -hmm. it was too much, and then they went to like a. It's not. A, they won't say <clears> it. It's kind of like a GML style EQ. Okay. You know what I'm saying so. It's clean, but it it digs right in, man. Like like I can't have it on my rack. Like I need. Oh, that's dope. Hyperion is like yeah. Like if I don't have my Hyperion, I'm fucked. Like you found saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's really and plus I started using it on vocals. I've never used it on vocals. And I started doing that recently and it sounds great, man. I have no issues with it and stuff, yo. So that's what I'm telling you, man. You definitely yeah. gotta pick up the gyrator. Mm -hmm. the gyrator, man, pick up the uh, a bus compressor and then the uh Hyperion, man. Okay, that's the shopping list then. I'm going to have to yeah, shoot man. towards that and check those out then, man. Hell well, yo, man. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, I appreciate Thanks. the conversation. I'm glad you came on. glad we got a chance to to link and uh, to, to holler and, and, you know, just add some more content out there besides all the craziness that's going on in the world. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. So now I appreciate Word. it, man. And make sure y'all check out that new Donnie Darko album, yo. It's coming out. Uh, well, we're gonna have the date this week, so just follow me on Instagram. That's Word. Like posting the dates and shit, but I appreciate. Oh, yeah, tell them your tell them your Instagram so they know where to find you. Yeah, the Instagram is Sutter Kane NSD. So that's S U T T E R K A I N N as in Nancy, S as in Sam, D as in David. NSD. Okay. That's what's up. All right, All right yo. All right. All right. I'll check this out. When I said I was not gonna kill you I ain't got no emotion That's why I don't feel So who you talking? Get to explain it Go ahead and run your mouth Go ahead and start playing But she don't know I just snorted a whole eight ball Wait, I'm telling her Fuck the street and I'm fucking face on Sitting in the dark Thinking of some sadistic shit Like I'm a stabbing bitch There's a pussy with a goose of things But fuck that I'm on some 12 days Shotty black And I was in the barrel right Where the bitch body at She put the way the body at Bitch, I am a maniac And I ain't fucking slept For days like an insomniac So I'm gonna make it through the fucking pain like a cardiac And then the fucking freezes where the breath is Does the body set Was it the coke? Yeah, probably that So won't you deep dump the barrel, bitch Suck the ticket, baby, sir I'm man. on her block in a Cadillac Bro, I'm waiting patiently So this bitch to bring her ass home I'm coked out, ready for my trip Gotta roll cause she just takes Call her for my 44 Magnum With the passion of an angry ex I'm about to sodomize and wreck the bitch With angry sex, I'm taking X Trippin' balls off a murder clock I am on some evil shit Keep that bitch hog tied up on my friend Zito shit You all get yeah. to my ashes to my neck snow Gotta call space some bodies, bodies when next cut There's more blood than sumo The ritual is full new Can't call it all, watch it on YouTube One million views of what they saw inside your living room We choose to get to a chair And I am filming you, I'm killing you You know the slaughter is your thing So I cock back my shit and just shot in the motherfucking nose full of coke Veins full of dope Dick in the mouth Keep sucking till she choke Nine millimeter Shove it in the throat Blew her brains out of mouth Watch the blood on the soul Brass knuckles to a fucking wrist Broke shotgun to a face Blew her mouth through her nose Brain full of murder Heart full of fucking static You burn you, shoot you, cut you So, so in your wounds with some
gasoline, light a match and make you swallow some kerosene. The fucking mass murder is back. Shoot your bitch in the face. Suffocate on the track. Jam, bitch, lay it down. Masturbate on the back. Got a 